Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another show for another episode of our Tactical Breakdown series, our show in which we look at the players that have been linked to Arsenal, break them down in an analytical and statistical way with the help of some expert insight. We'll look at their statistics and compare them with some of the current and linked players to Arsenal to give you guys the most educated view possible around Arsenal's transfer targets this summer. We move on to what is, I think now we're in the 30s of players that we've looked at this summer window already. How many signs have Arsenal made? Zero. And yet we persist in breaking down all of the players that Arsenal have been linked to. So if you could appreciate the hard work that goes into making these shows, please drop a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Turn those notifications on so you never miss a show. And if you'd like to help support the channel too, you can join up as a member, join our Discord server and get the opportunity to come on the show yourself as well. Without further ado, though, we're going to be looking today at Nuno. Uh, now I'm going to get this wrong. Uh, so many times when I do this, this, I basically try my hardest. I really do to look uh, at players' pronunciations, to find out from the expert how you pronounce it. And I've heard a number of ways. I've heard Tavares, I've heard Tavares, uh, but actually uh, you don't even pronounce the R from the sounds of things. It's just Tavares uh, is how you pronounce it. And I've heard that from the Portuguese mouth itself, as you will do in a second. And we are going to hear now from our expert. Our expert today is Jose Miguel, or Jose Miguel, I'm going to get his pronunciation of his name right too, uh, who is a Portuguese football expert and writer based in Lisbon, where it should, of course is where Benfica is also based. So he's going to give us all the lowdown on whether or not he feels that Tavej is a good enough player to be Arsenal's backup and cover for Kieran T. Hey guys, so uh, Nuno Tavares from Benfica has been heavily linked to, to a move to, to Arsenal. Uh, in Portugal, the deal is, is being seen as almost a done deal. So it is very likely that Nuno Tavares will join Arsenal. Um, regarding the player, he's, he's 21 years old. He's, he was raised in the Benfica youth teams. Um, he's been in the A team for two seasons now. He has never been able to impose in the, in the first team. Um, in Benfica, um, he has always faced some severe competition with with Grimaldo, um, never letting him, uh, um, you know, gain the the place, gain his his place at the at the Benfica starting eleven. Uh, but um, I think that has to do with Nuno Tavares not being fully prepared yet uh, to play at, at in a club like Benfica and uh, uh, even less to play at a, at a club like, uh, like Arsenal. So I do not think that Nuno Tavares is ready at this moment uh, to move to a Premier League and to, you know, to battle for a, for a place in the, in the left uh, with, with Kieran Tierney. Um, I do think he's unprepared. So Nuno Tavares is, is 21 years old, but he's quite fast. He's physically he's a prime player. But tactic, tactically, technically, and especially mentally, I do not think he is a player. He is a grown player. I think he is still a kid. He needs to grow a lot. He needs to maybe uh, play on loan for two seasons here in Portugal in the in the minor teams, um, and then try to to impose himself in Benfica, and then and then he can think uh, of a move to a, to a club, a big club like Arsenal that plays in a big league, much better than the Portuguese one. Much more, much more tough, much more competitive than the Portuguese one, and so I do not think Nuno Tavares is ready. I do not think that Arsenal can face or can see Nuno Tavares as a valid uh, replacement for Kieran Tierney when when he gets injured or anything. Um, and I do not think that Arsenal. Um, I do not. I don't know the the amounts involved, but I don't think Arsenal um, is set to make a very good deal. Um, because Nuno Tavares has not yet shown what type of player he can be and where he can reach. Um, and, and so I would give it a little bit more thought. Um, I'd wait maybe one, one season, two seasons to see what kind of player he becomes. And then, yes, uh, I would think of, of signing him if that's the case, but not, not uh, at this moment. Thank you. Yeah, no, <laughs> not great. Not not great uh, listening that, to be honest. But massive thank you to Jose Miguel for helping us out. He often helps us out with our Portuguese links to those players. But it's, it doesn't fill you with confidence, uh, does it, to, to hear words like that. 
Um, I understand. Uh, I've spent a uh, part of the day now looking at some of the clips of him, and, and yes, he is quick. Yes, he is very attacking. Likes to get forward and get into the box and play progressively and try and play out from the back as much as possible. But he has got that kind of air of immaturity uh, about his game, losing the ball quite often, uh, putting himself under pressure a lot, making quite a few defensive mistakes. He has a lot more development to do, um, and that might show up in some of the statistics that we're going to look at. Speaking of which, let's do that now uh, by looking at some of the stats, and we're going to compare uh, Nuno Tavej uh, to uh, some players in particular. We're going to look at him and how he compares to uh, Kieran Tierney, of course, uh, Kalasinac, and Josh Duick as well, who is another young uh, option that Arsenal, of course, have been linked to as well. We're going to look at their league statistics and look at Kalasinac's Bundesliga stats from his time at Schalke. Uh, and of course, uh, Dewey playing in the Scottish League and Tini playing in the Premiership and Tavares playing in the uh, in the Liga Nosh uh, in Portugal. So let's start off with uh, the heat maps, uh, which should be on the screen, see on your screen now. Now, what you notice about uh, Tavares' his heat map here is it is much more intense in the attacking half of the pitch. Defensively, is not as kind of intense on getting back whereas you see if you look for someone like Tierney you see that intensity in his own half of getting back you see that also with Kalasnach you see it also with Josh Duick I mean Tavares is, is much more of a person that pushes into the final third more and is, is kind of tracking back maybe slightly questionable which is a little concerning off the bat if we then go on to that kind of defensive side of the things now he does get involved with a lot of defensive duels 9.57 defensive duels being made which is high and good winning 54.7 percent of those which is the lowest in comparison to all of the others on our list here, but it's still keeping pace uh, with these. Josh Dewey coming out very well with 61.8%. If we go into the aerial jewels, he's not short, uh, is Tavaj, and he's given 60% of the 4.21 aerial jewels, which is the most of any of our left backs on our list. So he does have that aerial influence over the others that he's compared to. Go into the loose ball jewels, he's only winning 22.2% of those loose ball jewels, which you can compare it to someone like Tierney winning over 50%, very impressive of the 1.69 that he's getting involved with. If we then go into interceptions, he comes out just just uh, just above Kalasinac, which is not going well for the Bosnian defender here, at 3.45 compared to the over 4 uh, and even over 4.5 for Josh Duick as well. If we then go into the losses, 12.77 um, is a lot. Uh, I mean... It's considerably higher than that of Kalasnac, but only 23% of those are in his own half, which is something that is, is definitely worth pointing out. That's, to be honest, most of the time he spends his time in a very attacking area of the pitch. So that's why you do tend to see that that statistic of his own half losses being quite low. But most on the list in comparison to those other than Josh Dewey, who as well, another young, immature player, losing it a lot. That's that level of development. But again, still considerably actually younger than Tavaj on the list. Going into the recoveries, 8.68 recoveries is the highest with 26.5% happening in the opposition half, which actually surprises me that it's that low in regards to the percentages because of the time that he spends in the opposition half. You'd think most of his recoveries would happen there. It worries me that maybe that percentage is so low and most of the recoveries are happening in his own half because he's losing the ball quite often in his own half. Whereas you look at someone like Kieran Tierney, the small amount of losses he makes, 6.65%. 36.1% of them are happening in the opposition half when he tries to get forwards. But 8.68 recoveries is still a high frequency, much higher than the others in comparison. If we have a look at the passing stats, this is where it slightly falls down a little bit. 79.2% passing accuracy of 50.94 passes per game. Not as high as that of Kalasnach, but much higher than that of Josh Duigan, around the same of that of Kieran Tierney. If we go into those passes into the final third, 5.62 passes in the final third with 79.5% passing accuracy is good. Uh, it's certainly an area that I'd be impressed to see those passes going into the final third and a good accuracy of those passes too. Passes into the penalty area, 4.21 with a 45.5% success rate so far on those. Uh, Kalasnach coming out of 1.39, which isn't that great, and Tini coming out as well. Uh, just was slightly lower than that of Tavaj there with a 4.17 and 45.3%. Touched in the penalty area, he does like to get into the box as much as he can and is the highest on our list here. And finally, looking at how much he shoots, it's not loads, not tending to shoot so much. So there's the stats. Let's apply some of the context. The context of the situation is, of course, that he's barely played many games um, for, for Benfica this season, has not been on the pitch too much. So when it comes across to try and look at the amount of kind of games he's played, if we have a look at the statistics across those 90 minutes, Tierney and that has played obviously a hell of a lot of games. Tavares has, has not played in comparison as many. And that is a bit of a problem when you think about 
trying to make these comparisons and how legitimate the statistics are. So I do want to make it very clear that those statistics are taken from a much smaller sample size in comparison to the others. However, there are still some promising signs. It's important that we balance this out, uh, of course, too. If we actually have a look at his injury record, which is important to do, if we just go on to transfermarts.com and get his injury history up. So far in 2021, he actually missed uh, eight games uh, because of injury. However, three of those were due to the positive test of the pandemic. Uh, as was experienced by quite a lot of the Benfica squad. If you want to find out the chaos that happened with the Benfica squads and their positive tests during the start of 2021, definitely go and check it out. It's an interesting and controversial read. Uh, but he had a hip injury at the start of the season in November, which kept him out for three games, and an ankle injury, which kept him out for two games in April as well. So he doesn't come out actually tend like too bad statistically in comparison. But as we said, he only played 635 minutes last season. So, I mean, you're averaging less than 10 full matches there, or nearly half of that. So it is very difficult to kind of measure statistically. And when you get the expert insight as well from Jose Miguel, it does make for a very risky signing. I'm not going to go out and stand out here and say I think it would be a bad signing to make because he's young, he's inexperienced, he would be coming in as cover. And from the numbers that would be we're kind of seeing in this, which is around seven million quid, if Arsenal can get someone for under ten million pounds as a backup, and that someone that's young with potential, it's probably a decent deal. But there is risk. I think there is a lot of risk um, associated with this, and there's questions about things off the pitch. There's questions about his mentality. There's questions about kind of his uh, attitude. I do feel I don't feel like Arteta and Edu would sign someone with those issues because of the issues they've had with the likes of Genduzi and, and the situation they find themselves in with Saliva. Although that is more conjecture than anything. So it's yeah, it's a little it's a little strange. Um, concerning when you make Kalasnac look defensively quite good. I mean, at the end of the day, statistics are what I like to say when you use them in context can be used as your primary and used really well. But applying context to stats is what makes them useful. And that's why it's important to look at statistics with the benefit of the situation, which is the fact that statistics for Tavej look okay. They look pretty good in certain areas, but he's played 635 minutes of football in Liga Nosh this season, which is an incredibly small sample size. Let's go into the chat box then and see what you guys are saying in the chat. Daniel Cross says, affordable, room to grow, good physical attributes. Seems like a decent option as a backup. Uh, some blokes as he's uh, drawing similarities with Nelson Samedo. I'm fine with this deal provided we can sell him to Wolves for 30 million plus. Um, Omar says, for that video of his dogs alone, yeah, I mean, don't search it. It's not it's not a great watch. Uh, but again, issues behind the scenes. Uh, Matt G says, I bet a clause in Kieran Tinney's contract was that he has to manage his development and turn him into a world beater. I mean, if you're Tierney, you don't really want to see Arsenal signing an amazing left back because you want to be not obviously starting as many games as possible. But from an Arsenal perspective, you want to see us trying to obviously maintain an amount of quality if Tierney does indeed get injured. Yo-Yo says, Tierney was greatly helped by Xhaka last season. Could we assume he'll be less adventurous without the Swiss captain? So the right back becomes more important. It depends on who we sign to replace Xhaka. Yeah, yeah, because obviously we don't know how influential that replacement centre midfielder will be with Tierney playing on that side. Or maybe we move Partey to the left-hand side where he can also play. Um, very interesting guy and quite cheap, uh, says Constantin. Carol Bailey says, Arsenal and Arteta can't afford to take risk signings next season. Arteta and the team have to hit the ground running, especially with our fan base. Daniel Roberts says, I'd just stick with Talaji Bola, who I wouldn't stick with because he's 22 now and hasn't had the best of seasons. Joel Lopez, though, is a lot more uh, kind of realistic as a potential option, but I still think Tavares' his level is above that, which kind of tells you, if anything, how low of a level Joel Lopez is as a player right now, and I don't think he's someone that I would want to rely on. Uh, Bobby Kerr says, we're going to end up sponsored by Pedigree Chum. <laughs> oh, dear. The jokes are going to continue. I mean, it's... You've... If you do something like that, you can expect these kind of jokes to come forward. Uh, Drew said, I'd rather sign Dwig if we are looking at a young player. If all we need is a backup, Van Arnholt makes more sense. Now, actually, whilst I am open to the idea, and we did our podcast, our transfer, Arsenal transfer podcast earlier on today, Vinny raised a really important point about the kind of the age profile of players that we need to be looking at. And yes, it might be beneficial for us to sign a more experienced player that can provide some really good cover, but... 
we kind of want to be a bit smarter in the market, sign players on the cheap that have a decent amount of sell-on value that we can also develop and maybe sell on later for a bigger fee. Um, so all of those things are important and maybe we should be targeting one of the younger options. Arsenal are certainly looking in that area. It is reported that Arsenal are looking for a player within the ages of 20 to 22. Tavares is, is 21, so it does make more sense. Um, Shumoy says, this is a great signing. He was superb against us. He's young, cheap, and will learn under someone like Tierney. I, I don't even remember him playing against us. Um, did he play against us? I saw, I don't remember him playing against us, but you know, he, he's got five appearances in the Europa League, but I don't, I do not remember him playing at all. He played five minutes against us. So, I mean, Shamoy, I'm not sure if that's true because he played five minutes against us. <laughs> that was it. Um, do you think being Prem proven, says Mini Boss, is a dumb point when all of the Prem's best players are from foreign leagues? Uh, not true, first of all, um, because you look at the best players in the leagues right now, we hate to say it, but Harry Kane, Mason Mount, um, you look at how Jack Grealish is doing, uh, you look at obviously the players that have come from other Premier League teams as well and gain their experience from a young age, despite not being necessarily English, a lot of players that are really at the top level have developed a lot of their time in England. I mean, even look at the likes of Salah and Kevin De Bruyne, who started out uh, obviously at Genk and then, well, I mean, Salah started out with Basel, but you know what I mean? They've come over to England at a young age, developed, gone away, come back. They still started and did some early development on in, in the Premier League. And you've got other players that were developed at a young age in the Premier League have gone on to, to become really, really fantastic talent. So I'm not sure that it's a dumb point um, to say that when all Prem's best players are from foreign leagues, because it's not true. Um, but I think Prem experience is important, it, but it's about finding the right balance. You need the right amount of players that have got that experience, and I think it's something that Arsenal have heavily not done of late, really something that we need to improve upon. Um, yes, Alan, superb. He played five minutes <laughs> against us. Um, I don't know where that came from. Gabriel says, what's the current situation with Madison? Uh, unlikely that we get a deal done, mate. Sorry, but uh, Arsenal are put off by the price, it seems. Uh, Red Gilly says, not a bad going forward. Can't defend. Sounds like Kalasinac. That And that is not a bad kind of assessment. He does look de very decent going forwards, but defensively, he does look a little bit suspect, more than a little bit suspect. If Arsenal can get a, a backup in that's young for a fair few million quids and it's not going to cost us too much money and Tierney can stay fit, great. However, T we know that Tierney has his injury issues and if these injury issues persist, then Tavares is, is going to be a bit of a problem um, because he is really quite suspect defensively. We will see where this goes and if there is any further movement on this deal, but it is being heavily reported by plenty of different outlets today, which does tell you, that there is very, very much um, uh, a lot of truth to this story. And it does go to show you once again, as we give you a little bit of an ITK update, we didn't see any ITKs throwing out this information and you see where the story breaks. It's through official channels. So that's another bit of advice to make sure you stay clear and you're looking in the right places for your information regarding Arsenal. It's been an absolute pleasure um, to see you guys as always. Make sure you check out our other shows of the day. It's our third show we've done today. Back to the the grind of pulling out three shows in one day. I hope you've enjoyed them. If you have, please drop a like on today's video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. A massive thank you again to Jose Miguel for helping us with our expert insight. We're back again tomorrow. I'm hoping to do a Molder, uh, the Turkish right back for Sassuolo. I'm hoping to do a tactical breakdown on him tomorrow with the help of Rich Hall, our Italian correspondent. So looking forward to giving you guys that content tomorrow. I'll be back again this tomorrow morning as well for the 8 a.m. transfer update. But it's an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, up the Arsenal. <laughs>